Welcome to Modern Gun Dog Training. Throughout this series of programmes, we're going to be exploring the training that goes into these little people, the working Cocker Spaniel. They're tenacious, loyal, and often very cheeky, but they make fantastic family companions and really good friends to have out of us in the shooting field and really add to the all-round shooting experience. We're going to start off with little people like Tartan here and we'll work right through the ages and stages until we end up with adult dogs like his mother and we'll be shooting over them in the shooting field. We'll be visiting shooting estates all across Scotland to do our training but also we'll be spending some time on public access ground just to go, which just goes to show that anybody with the time or inclination can find somewhere suitable to put the time, time and effort in to train their dog. We're going to be starting off with little people like Tartan here and working through right through the stages until we end up with adult dogs like his mother and other ones and we'll be shooting over them in the field in, in a variety of different situations. My name's Joe Hipwell. I'm from Sealpin Gun Dogs at Riddle Estate in the Scottish Borders. I train dogs full time, so it's what we do here. I learnt how to do this from my grandfather, Edward Martin. I compete with my Spaniels and have represented Scotland and we demonstrate our dogs all over the, the UK. But what I really enjoy and what I really get most satisfaction from is helping people get the best out of their dogs. And I hope together through this series of programmes we'll be able to do that. Okay, we're going to set up some memory retrieves. Now, a memory retrieve is really useful in training. I like to do lots and lots of these, far more memories than blind retrieves, because memory retrieves, they're the way to teach your dog to do blind retrieves, because they've got the confidence, and if you get good at them, they're going to succeed if they're going back to the same spot. But the routine for sending them back for a memory retrieve, when you take them away from something, turn them round and line them up and point them back, that's just the same lining and pointing as a blind retrieve. But you get difficulties with blind retrieves because they're not sure something's there and if a young dog lacks confidence and things, they can hesitate running out, not go as far as you like. So if you establish the idea with them through memory retrieves that when you line and point them like that, there's something at the end if they keep going. And the best way to do that is put one of these out somewhere, start with it easy, put one out somewhere, walk the dog away at heel, first only go you know, 30 yards on, on open grass, turn around, line them up and point them back. If they succeed, make it a bit more difficult. Take them further away, further away. But always send them back to the same place to start with. When they're getting so that they succeed at that every time, pop the dummy down before you get the dog out the car, walk them away, then turn around and point them at it. So then it is a blind retrieve of sorts, but it's a blind retrieve back to the same area where they've picked lots of memory ones. That's what we're preparing for because when you're out shooting, you may get the odd memory retrieve where something's shot and you can't pick it right now if you're during the drive and that sort of thing. So it's useful to build up their memory from that point of view, but actually they're always going to remember that if they've got anything about them. What we're really preparing for is the setup. The foot down, the hand like that, and sending them back for those memory retrieves gets them ready to do that for blind retrieves as well. Walls are one of the countryside's obstacles and we want these cockers to be nice and confident when negotiating them. So we've got Annie here against this wall here and we're going to see if we can get her to jump it. Now I've chosen this wall because it's not too high. It's still uh, at least twice if not three times as high as her, which we have to bear in mind, but it's not, it's not unscalable. And the top's nice and rounded, which means she can get a good grip on the top there when she, if she gets her front feet on. And on the other side, it's not too steep a drop. She actually hits the ground sooner than, you know, it's, the ground is about here on the other side, although it does slope away. But that's not going to intimidate her when she hops over. Um, she's not done any jumping before. Uh, she's been through fences and that sort of thing, which I like to teach them first before I teach them how to jump, um, just because of barbed wire, really. But we want that command in our um, toolbox, that get over, which means get over, you know, get over that wall, jump. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hop over a couple of times back and forward with her, see if I can encourage her over, and then we'll try a couple of retrieves as well, see if we can get her to do that. We'll see how it goes. This wall might be too high to start with. We might have to move to a lower one, but I think she's quite a confident girl. I think we'll be okay. But like anything, we're going to introduce it carefully and properly 
to make sure we don't worry her at all with this. Good girl. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Annie. Come on, Annie. Good girl. Come on, Annie. Good girl. Come on, Annie. So that's what we want. She's trying. She's got her feet up. Tell her she's a good girl. But actually, she'll be better at getting over here. See, she's trying. Good girl. Come on, Annie. She'll be better if she starts from the ground. So you just want to... That's it. Good girl. Good girl, Annie. Good girl. Annie. Annie. Get over. Annie. 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 Get over. Get over. And I'm going to start saying that command now. Get over. Annie. Get over. Annie. Get over. Get over. Get over. Go on. Annie. Get over. Get over. Good girl. Annie. Sit up. Sit up. Get over. Get over. Get over. Go on. Get over. Good girl. Get over. Go on, Annie. Get over. Good girl. Good girl. Annie. Annie here. Annie. Annie. Sit up. Sit up. Good girl. Annie. Get over. Get over. Get over. Good girl. Annie. One more time over here. Annie. Get over. Get over. Get over. Come on. Good girl. You see, they jump. Half jump, half scramble. Annie, Annie, come on, Annie, Annie, good girl, Annie, good girl, come on, Annie, good girl, Annie, get over, get over, get over, get over, good girl, Annie, Annie, come here, Annie, good girl, Annie. Okay, we're down at the lock here and we're going to introduce Risk to a bit of water. Now, his experience of water so far, he's had a few splashes about in a shallow stream and that sort of thing. He's never actually got out of his standing depth and swam. Down at the stream, that was with other dogs running about for a bit of fun, and he was really happy to go in and out, quite enjoying it. So I don't think we'll have too much of a problem here, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. But we'll do him like we do any of them, a really easy one to start with, and see if we can gradually get him to get his confidence, always using a nice retrieve for him. Sit up, good boy, sit up. So just put it into the edge to start with. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Risk. Good boy, good boy, good boy, risk, risk, sit up, sit up, good boy, good laddie, sit up, good boy, good boy, risk, sit up, sit up, and right from the word go, when he's coming out, look, sit up, we're going to encourage him to shake after he's given it to us, which is easy to start when they're young like this, if you never let them get into the habit of dropping it and shaking as they come out, just as soon as they come out, you want to say, come on, come on, come on, take it off them and then let them shake, good boy, that's the order that they start doing it in, that's the order that they'll continue doing it in, hopefully. Good boy, sit up. That was fine, we'll just try it a bit further. Sit up. And I've chosen this bit because it's quite a gradual entry. You saw there, he just got his feet wet and paddled a bit. And just, we can gradually get it a bit further and a bit further and get him swimming here. If you, if you do this at a place which is a sheer drop straight into swimming, it can be a bit daunting for them at first if they're diving right in. Good boy, sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Risk. Good boy. Good boy. Risk. Come here. Risk. Risk. Come here. Risk. Come here. Risk. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Risk. Risk. Good boy. Let's see. Take it. Then good boy. Then let him shake. Good boy. And it's not difficult when he's right, when we're very close to the edge like this, to take it off him before he shakes. Risk. Good boy. Sit up. Sit up. Good boy. Sit up. See, that didn't phase him too much. I mean, he didn't like get to getting his head under, but as soon as he was back out, he didn't panic or anything. He got this picked, but he's quite a sensible, confident sort of dog. Sit up. Sit up. Let's try it a bit further. Sit up. Get him, see if we can get him properly swimming. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Risk. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, then. There's a good boy. Come on. Risk. Ah, no, no, no. Risk, risk, risk. Good boy. Come on. Good boy, good boy. Steady, good boy, good boy. Now you can shake, good boy, good boy. So he just started to shake there before he gave it to me, but straight away, ah, no, 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 just stop him, good boy. Take this, then let him shake, good lad, hey, good boy. Risk, good boy, risk, 